talk about let's talk about Denver and Phoenix, yeah. and then let's save Lakers Warriors for tomorrow since we're gonna come in okay, and actually okay. talk about Game Two. Sure. So we can continue that conversation about what this means for like Steph or LeBron mm-hmm. or concerns for the team. Let's let's get one more look at them. You're you know, right. In game You're, two. We need to have more space reserved for Steph and LeBron's legacy talk. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not a topic that people hear you know about what? all the if, time. If you need, you know, flip over to literally any podcast, but don't do that until three. Mm. Um, so like we mentioned, Nuggets and Suns uh, have two weeks off until they play game three. Yep. And right now it's a 2-0 series. Uh, I mean, Denver came into the playoffs, you know, stumbling, I guess, like a 500 team in the last month, but they had already clinched everything. You know, there were some concerns about their defense. They had lost games to teams like a Houston. Uh, I think they've been the most impressive team out of, um, you know, all 16 teams in these playoffs so far. I mean, that's fair. Um, I, I mean, look, in this case, I, for a lot of people who maybe didn't see the Nuggets that closely or didn't catch them that often, like, mm-hmm. I think you got a true appreciation of how hard it is to like contain them as a group, right? Because I think that's a team that similar to what Miami has done uh, or even what um, New York has done in terms of defining roles for guys, like they've really done that. And they also have MVP level talent Mm -hmm. and they have a supporting cast as well. So it's just been a joy to watch them operate. Um, Obviously they did drop that one game to Minnesota, whatever. Even in that one game, that comeback in those last two minutes. Like I know it's, it was against the big now and the wolves, but it's like, it's, that was impressive to me too. No, absolutely. If Yoko just made both free throws, that that series is just straight up over Mm -hmm, in that, mm -hmm. in that moment. Um, but I think all, obviously all of it's centered around Jokic, but obviously you have the Jamal Murray aspect of it in terms of their synergy in the two man game. Mm-hmm. It's so beautiful to watch no, them play pick and roll at the end of games. Like you know, obviously throughout the course of games, but especially when it gets really important, Jamal has all these ways to be able to feed Jokic. Jokic yeah. has all these ways to be able to. They just get know Jamal where each open. other is going to be in these different spots, and it feels yeah. like they're running like multiple actions usually. Like, and you to can't each really other. switch it. Like obviously, when the Raptors played them, we were able to you know put uh, I think OG on Jokic and Scotty on Jamal, right. and you could switch those pick and rolls so you can at least limit some of those um, you know mismatches. Mm-hmm. I think obviously Jokic can still punish you one on one. But ultimately, most teams don't have that kind of personnel to do that. You're typically using a guard to guard Jamal and your center and your biggest body to try to guard Jokic. And so you can't switch that action. There's always going to be those gaps. They play a beautiful pick and roll game. Mm -hmm. Um, I also think that like Michael Porter Jr. has been just, it's been really enjoyable to watch him just catch and shoot. And this guy, obviously he's really tall, but he's able to really rise up, get himself clearance. And he is just, he just has like this really beautiful jump shot. And Mm -hmm. it just consistently goes in. Uh, at a very, very high clip. You know, he can also do a couple of other things offensively as well. Sometimes he can get his own, but mostly him catching and shooting is, is just so deadly in terms of players who are still currently in the playoffs. And then on top of the fact that you have Aaron Gordon, who is just excellent at just, you know, doing little duck-ins. It's always his man that comes over to help double on Jokic or double on Jamal Murray. Yeah. So Aaron Gordon's left open a little bit. Sometimes he can get his own offense as well, but most likely... What you typically see is Jokic finding him for that, like, lob. The, yeah. those lob passes. He's so good at it. I, I, I'm I, genuinely curious who is, like, combined for more alley-oops than Jokic to Aaron Gordon. They have to be leading the league this season because he always finds them there. Aaron Gordon's also played really good defense, by the way. And then I think they just have, like, assorted good role players, right? Like, KCP, Bruce mm-hmm. Brown, you know, Christian Brown. Like, these guys come in, and they all have a little bit of guard skill. They can catch and shoot for three if they need to. They can handle a little bit if they need to. They can even get in the mid-range if they need to. But they they play hard. They hustle. They know how to cut. And it's just like every single guy is in a really, really well-defined role around the fact that Jokic obviously is just a transcendent talent. Yep. And I feel like him going into the playoffs, he's actually not elevated his play to a next level, but his play has been so consistent that it's allowed other teams or other players around them to really be comfortable in their roles. Because I think sometimes you get really uncomfortable. You go to the playoffs, your number one guy isn't a number one guy anymore. He's not having that number one level of impact. Now what do you do? Suddenly you're scrambling for everything. And Jokic gives you that ultimate insurance that he's consistently going to be able to play at a high level. So I, I just, I love watching the Nuggets, man. They're, they're, they play team basketball. They play really well. Defensively, I don't think they have that high of a gear. But offensively, I just think that they carve your part consistently in every possession. And, and most possessions coming down look very different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think I think it's such a contrast in this series too. When you, when you talk about the the team play of, of Denver and the continuity, and and you know the you know how Jamal and and Nikola Jokic know you know each other's game so well, you know contrast to to Phoenix, 
which, you know, is not a basketball team. It's just two dudes and then a bunch of other guys filling in spots. It, it does feel a little bit like a pickup run. I'm not going to lie It's to not you. a basketball yeah. team. And but, like, I mean, they're, they're, they're awesome to watch. Are they? You don't think Devin Booker is awesome to watch? Devin Booker is awesome Devin to watch, but that whole team is not awesome to watch to me. No. Yeah, they don't they no. don't play like team basketball. <laughs> yeah, no, but I think <laughs> it's an ultimate contrast in style. No, in this, I think sticking series. with Denver too, like very different players between the the big three in Golden State that's won all these championships, mm. and then you talk about Jamal, Nikola Jokic, and even even Michael Porter Jr. But it's like Michael Porter Jr. reminds me of like you know Clay Thompson the way he's able to shoot, especially when you know a little bit. Yeah, yeah. and then the the chemistry it's like the Steph Draymond chemistry. I feel like Jamal and Jokic are kind of working their way there too. They just know each other so well mm. on the court. And, and, you know, we've seen the sustained success of Golden State. And, like, we haven't seen Denver break through. And it's because they've had to deal with so many injuries the last couple of years, yeah, right? No, last couple fair. of years, Jokic has had to roll in to these playoffs with, like, absolutely nobody around him. Again, no offense yeah. to Will Barton, but we saw Will Barton here in Toronto, right? Yeah, anyways. Like, that was uh, one of his, like, leading scores alongside of him. Yeah, so, you know, I I think I would have to say if we're doing this whole exercise, like, to, to me, Denver is the is favorite, favorite right now. Yeah. I mean, I I'm, I still expect the series, I still expect Phoenix to take at least two games, if not even take it to game seven. No, I think this is over in five. Really? I think okay. this is over in five. I just, I mean, I don't know, man. I think Devin Booker, the, the, he's, his scoring, I mean, he, it, it's always been the attribute that has really stood out in his game. Mm-hmm. But he's taken that to another level. I, I love his competitiveness, too. He's been scrapping on defense. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a bit of playmaking for him as well. So, and, of course, KD can just be KD. I, I think, yeah, like they just need to shoot more off. Like, <laughs> but, like, that's not – if you're if that is your I'm only sorry. adjustment – That is the only adjustment. Being down 2-0. And I know Denver wasn't a great road team during the regular season. Yeah. So, sure, maybe they come back to 2 But, mm-hmm. like, tell me the other players on the team, man. Like, the ball well, is still going to swing to Josh Okogi when they, you know, double and collapse – on Devin Booker. Like, it's still going to go to Torrey Craig. You still yeah. got campaign coming off the bench. Bismack Biombo is your first big. People yeah. crying for TJ Warren and Terrence Ross as, like, solutions. Like, no, Terrence Ross is not a solution to anything. There's Sorry. nothing there. Uh, this is not a team. No, I mean, I, I just, it, it's interesting because yeah. I think Monty Williams has done a good job over the years, especially when the Raptors have gone sure. to play Phoenix, which is only twice a year. But, you know, you get to see them with or without Chris Paul, with or without Devin Booker, they're still able to so operate and play as a team and as a mm-hmm. group because they had a, a couple of those connecting pieces. And I feel like now when you watch the Suns, it feels so weird to me because those guys, those supporting players, I mean, you were asking me this the other day too. You were like, didn't these guys play well in the finals run before? Like, didn't we see campaign have good so moments? I was so impressed with DeAndre Ayton when they yeah. made the finals. Yep. And I, I feel like he's regressed as a player. Sure, sure. So, I, and I do think that like for 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 that, that's a coaching Sure. Um, struggle for, mm-hmm. for Monty Williams. I don't think mm-hmm. he's going to get let go or anything, but I do think that next season yeah. he's going to have to figure out how a lot of these pieces work together. Right now, you can't, you can't even decide who his fifth man is. But right? that's what I'm saying. And, then and how Chris Paul's si- also injured. Then how are you sitting here and telling me they're going to take it to seven? Because they have Devin Booker and Kevin Durant. <laughs> I know, and like, they've had them so far. They're down 2-0. That's different. The thing, that's the most different. impressive thing for me with Denver yeah. was like you can't be Denver in Denver, man. It's just it's, it's like <laughs> well, so hard it. to do. But game two was like you know they had a terrible game from Jamal Murray. You know the offense couldn't get humming the whole time. Mm. For them to win that kind of game too was like really impressive to me. Because sure. when you think of like teams going into Denver, it's just like oh they got run out of the gym, right? Yeah. And I thought Devin Booker and K, uh, and KD both played really well. They put up their numbers. But they got to. But take, you're like you're I'm, like they I'm, need to I'm play. I'm not kidding. Are they but, playing? They're playing. They're playing tomorrow night. Yeah, I, I need them to combine for sixty shot attempts. They need to combine for, I think, 90 points for them to have a chance. It's, do- it's doable for them. It is doable, but like, okay, they're going to have to do that four times. I know. They're not They're not going to do it four times, but <laughs> they're going to at least do it once or twice. I'm telling you. But this, I think this is a lesson we got to learn because like, I think when they traded for KD too, I was right away being like, yo, we got to have them as the favorite because just because of the talent. Right? Yeah, for sure. And we haven't even talked about Chris Paul's out for the next two games. I know this is not yeah. prime Chris Paul anymore, but you're still missing no, but a, you point need guard. a point guard. Yeah, you need a guy who can run pick and yeah. roll at, at Jokic. Yeah. I feel like that's the only way that you can really expose him yeah. is you consistently put him in pick. Like even when Toronto played them, mm-hmm. it was like like Fred and Jakob played pick and roll against them nonstop. Right. And they actually both had great games. Yeah. Just like how last year when, when the Jokic went to the, uh, the the playoffs, it was Steph running pick and roll at him nonstop. Mm-hmm. And that actually allowed the, the, the yeah. Warriors to really get by the Nuggets fairly easily. No, that's fair. I think the that's lesson, the only way you need a point guard to beat them. Yeah. And Chris Paul being injured really, really hurts in that sense. Yeah. I think the lesson is just like, we just have to give more credit and more value to like continuity and like team building and stuff because no, this team really came into the playoffs and right away had to just like find themselves right yeah like like without having just a runway to like figure out roles like i don't know what these sure. guys roles are like they're just being thrown out there to like you know stand in the corner you know go like there's just not there's no connectivity there yeah and that's the thing too because i think 
you know, even in the playoffs for, for teams that have continuity and stuff, they mm-hmm. still have to re- redefine themselves. They still have to like reinvent what they're doing. Like even yeah. think about when the Raptors won the title, right? Like in the Sixers series, they had to figure out, okay, for this matchup, we need to play Serge and Mark together. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. we need to never play any other guards other than Kyle Lowry, right? And that's mm-hmm. what they figured it out, right? And then yeah. they figured it out. In the Bucks series, you know, they had to figure out, okay, look, we're going to have to, Kawhi's going to have to volunteer to cover Giannis, mm. really cut that off. Or we're going to, you know, make some other adjustments as well, be able to win that one. And, you know, like, I, I think you, you're you going to have to consistently reinvent. That's what the playoffs are. There's going to be different matchups, but you also need a base thing to fall back on. And yes. I still don't feel like Phoenix has that base even set. They remotely. need more players. They just need more players. I mean, they just need players to figure out their roles. They it's need not, more coaching, too. And they need more time, but they don't have it. But like, listen, 